Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at opacity and a simple way of basically making a texture or material transition from 0 to 1 or invisible to visible. Now this is a quite a simple effect to achieve, there are a variety of ways of doing it. The way we're going to be looking at it in this video is looking at the patch editor way of doing it. If you want to find a more elegant solution, I would advise looking at how to do it with JavaScript. Uh, we have got a video on this channel where we're looking at how to use the slider to adjust opacity, but in this video we're just going to be using the inbuilt tools. So as you can see on screen right now, I have a simple image that's basically transitioning between 0 and 1 on a looping animation. So for example, you could use something like this to trigger uh, at the start of your event to say when this first loads, this will now transition from 0 to 1 with just an animation that plays once, and then from then on it will be visible. Um, so again, what we're showing you here is just a sort of one way of doing it. It's up to you to kind of take this a little bit further. So this is a very quick five minute make. In fact, it might even take us less than that. So let's start from scratch. So I'm going to begin with a new project. Like so, I'm just going to quickly go through this. I'm going to add a face tracker. On this face tracker, I'm just going to add a plane just so I've got something to see. I'm going to create a material. This material I'm going to, in my case, choose it to be flat. This is, you could use anything you want, as long as you've got the option to adjust opacity later on. Uh, I'm not going to rename this, but I could if I wanted to. I'm going to select my material. I'm just going to choose a image. So in this case, I'm going to choose my channel's logo, which should be saved here. There we go, choose that, like so. So by default, the image is 100% or 1. Uh, opacity. I'm going to open up my patch editor, so view show patch editor. I'm now going to add a swizzle and I'm going to need two of these. And uh, what the swizzle does basically is it takes a, a value, so it can be an x value, a y value, a z value, but we're going to be taking our RGB value, which is our color data, and then we're going to be also taking our alpha data, which is represented by A. So the first swizzle is going to be RGB for our color. I'm going to add one more swizzle, and this is going to take our A, or our opacity. I'm now going to add a multiply. And I'm going to link my swizzle alpha to this multiply, like so. I'm now going to add a pack. I want to change this pack to be a vector 2, because we're going to take in two numeric values. I'm just going to link my RGB swizzle to the top, and I'm going to link my multiply from my swizzle to the bottom input on my pack here, like so. And at the moment, these will show up errors because they're not currently taking any information, so these need to be linked to our texture. So in my case, I'm just going to drag my texture into my patch editor and hook up the RGB to the, both of these swizzles, like so. Now the error should go. At the moment, my opacity is 1, so I'm not controlling that at the moment. But uh, if I go to my material, click on the arrow next to texture, hook this up to my pack, like so. There we go. And now any value I put into my multiply here would be controlling my material. So this is where I could, for example, add in a loop animation, link this to a transition, I'm going to choose my transition to be a number and then hook this up to my multiply patch here so it goes between 0 and 1 and this will now loop my opacity to have it fading in and out. If I didn't want that to be the case I could also just use a standard animation patch, hook this up to my progress and then basically have a trigger so for example I could have object tap or screen tap or um, after something else happens, then I want this to hook in and start the playing animation from that point. Hook this into my play. So now when I go and tap my screen, it will play and fade in my material. If I wanted this to fade out, I could, exam for example, just add in a switch beforehand. So this will switch it between in playing or reversing, so tap it once it plays, tap it again, it will reverse the animation. So this is how I can have a fade in, fade out. 
And again, this doesn't have to be a screen tap. This could be any gesture or animation we choose. So as you see, that's very quick to make. Now we're going to go a little bit further and make this a little bit um, tidier. So the way we could make this tidier is we, for example, could start creating groups. So I could select these four controllers here, right click and create a group like so. And I could call this group my capacity controller. I could go to my group properties. And I'm just going to remove all my inputs at the moment and we'll be adding in new ones. So under inputs, I'm just going to add my first input. So this will be my texture. And I'm going to make sure this is a texture type. I'm then going to add another one and this will be my opacity. And I'm going to have this as a number and I'm going to have this set to have a maximum value. So default value, for example, I could say is 1 or 0 0.5 minimum value 0, maximum value 1, so 1 is 100%. And I'm just going to add my output here, and I'm going to have this output to be a texture output, like so. So now I could just simply hook my texture into the texture here, hook the opacity up to here, and then hook this up to my material. Now. I have to go back into here quickly and just make sure that these purple and orange yellow outputs are now linked up. So my texture is hooked up to my two swizzles. My opacity is hooked up to my opacity here. And my pack is linked to my output. And if I go back to main here, this should now work exactly as it did before. But now we have this one tidy little group rather than having a kind of more messy chain. So we need to, we can't control opacity uh, directly. So the way to control opacity is we need to basically control the texture essentially. So the texture we control which controls the material, the material is then applied to our object. If we were to try and control opacity on an object itself you'll find that you only have the option for on or off. So you kind of have to work around it by controlling the material to control whether that uh, object is seen or not. That is the basics of opacity with Spark AR. Hopefully this has been helpful. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.